Okay, um, welcome to um, the uh, first video that we do on the Horus Heresy box set. Um, we decided to um, paint um, an ultramarine. We got that box uh, as a gift from uh, the Battlefield Berlin. Really amazing content actually in the box. Uh, I'm quite surprised. It's uh, you really get a lot of miniatures for uh, for your euros. So um, I really like the the figure. Um, very sharp details, um, really nice for a plastic kit. And yeah, as I said, we will um, go for an ultramarine. Uh, they come with like a, a load of um, options as well for their weapons too. Yeah. With the box sets, they're usually the even though really detailed, they're the snap together kits, mm -hmm. and the, the the weapons are limited. But with this one, loads of customization options. Really great box. Yeah. Um, we will also use uh, Games Workshop colors in, in this video um, almost entirely. So um, for the for the blue, we will start with a uh, blue called uh, Cantor Blue. Um, and some Teclas Blue, we also have the Abaddon Black and the Ceramid White on the palette. See that dark color here is the Cantor Blue. Mm, that will be our, our base color. And we will just start on that um, black foundation. That's the Chaos Black spray paint from Game Torture. So in case this is the first time you've watched one of these videos, maybe you could um, talk a bit about how you thin your paint for, for doing your base coloring? Um, I like to keep the base color uh, in a consistency that takes me, uh, I think, one or two layers to, to get a solid coat. So you can see the base coat is um, still shining through a bit. Um, I'll let that layer dry and um, just uh, continue with the second layer. Mm -hmm. For the uh, next step, we will mix some of the uh, Cantor blue with uh, the lighter blue. The, it's called uh, Teclas blue. And we will already start painting in our highlights as a, as a layer. So we will not wet blend it on the surface or so, we will just um, mark in the highlights. a little bit here on the side. Okay, and just make sure that the <coughs> the highlight and especially in the middle uh, is also quite solid so um, you don't have any of the base color shining through. Um, in the next step we'll just take some of our highlight color and mix that with the base color here to the side and we thin that down quite a bit to get a nice thin glaze to actually work a little here on the transition between the two parts. And at this stage it's very important to make sure that, that each layer is fully dry before you attempt to go over the top. If, if, at this stage, if you if you then pull up that previous layer, it can, it can look quite blotchy. Yeah. And it's also important to, to note the direction of my brush stroke, so I really try to um, keep the color here in, in the middle of the, of the line and push it towards the, the highlight. And 
and at the same time, if you were going darker, you'd pull the light the other way. Yeah. Yeah. But you can see already it blends in quite, quite a bit nicer here than there. Mm -hmm. So if this is your first time watching something, this, this technique is called layering and glazing. Something Ben would usually do is actually wet blending, um, typically with his, his patented loaded brush technique. Um, this must be killing you, right, doing, doing the old school technique? <laughs> no, actually it's quite, quite okay. Um, I think it's quite good um, to show also that, that you can achieve a similar re result with so-called um, like beginner techniques mm -hmm. because I really think there is not uh, no such thing as a beginner technique I mean um, it's always good to to know what you do so you can combine all kinds of techniques together and a lot of people have problems uh, with practicing the loaded brush so I think it's quite nice to show that you can actually ach achieve pretty much the same result mm -hmm. also with the most basic techniques and even when you do the loaded brush there are some because of the way you need to angle your your hand when you paint, there are even some areas that you use this technique of layering and glazing because yeah. you can't get in at that angle. Definitely. I would say I use always a combination of different techniques. It's really with most of the models, um, you have all the layers, uh, layers, glazes, um, feathering, and the load brush in there. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would like to push the contrast a little bit. So... I'm having just a very thin glaze of the techless blue. And then down here in the middle and then feathering out the sides with a clean brush. So you're placing down a thin surface area of the color, cleaning the brush, bringing it back, and then softening the edge so you don't get those stain marks. Is that mm -hmm. right? Also, added a bit of white to the this blue. Okay, <clears throat> and to increase the color, we need to add some, uh, to increase the, the contrast, we need to also add a shadow color, and therefore I'm mixing some counter blue with some black, and we'll glaze that here over, over the sides. Clean the brush. And feathered out towards the middle. Um, also, some pure black just here around the details like the rivets. The nice thing about the um, the pre-heresy stuff is it's quite clean. You don't have a lot of, uh, of detail so you can go for for a very nice edgy look actually on those. Mm -hmm. really want a, a dark frame over uh, all over the, the edge of the, the rivets so I just went for, for black over the whole thing and then we'll just put some highlights back on there.
a bit white. With that light mix, I will also get that edges here to the top a bit stronger. I will be fine. Looking a bit darker. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to to uh, go for a very extremely shiny, like almost non-metal armor. I think this is almost uh, it so far for the for the general uh, highlight on on the armor. Um, we will have a little bit of lighter spots like here and there um, on the scratches and little details, but for for the armor itself, I think that level of contrast is already quite nice. Um, I think for now I would um, just continue putting the base color on um, the rest of the blue parts and um, I think I can do that off cam because it's really just the, the base color. Um, as I said, one or two thin layers are better than one layer that is too thick because you don't want to obscure the details. Um, but I think after I've placed the, the um, base color on the model, we uh, we would show you how to place and where to place the highlights on there and yeah that's it okay all right so you can see um the base color is in place and as I said next thing we will do is place the highlights um i think for an armor like that is quite nice um because you can actually at the moment already see quite nice how the highlight would go because the uh, base color dried off a bit satin so um see this nice reflex here and yeah uh, we'll go for the reflex in the very same direction just remixing some of that highlight color And with a bit more of the base color in there, uh, we will paint a uh, second light here on the back. Okay, you can see that is quite rough, but um, just a few glazes, we can blend that in. Um, I think we can just try that here on the top and then I could do the the rest also the um, the rest of the feathering out I can do that off cam because it's pretty much the same as here um, just here I think it's quite good to see um, just that we can also feather it out with just a thin glaze of the um, of the highlight color because before I mixed just a mid-tone now with the highlight color it works as well. I decided to go for the highlight color here on this upper part because I would like it to be a bit brighter in the end than the lower parts here. Okay, so um, let me just continue a bit here with the Strong highlight, place that down and feather it out with a wet brush. So, like here towards the belt. Place 
replace it and further it out with a wet brush. Okay, yeah, I think you, you understood the uh, concept of uh, feathering out the, the tones. Um, this here looks um, quite a bit abrupt here in the, in the middle. You could either hide that with a little scratch or uh, blend that in. I think um, with most of the space marine, it would, would be okay to, to do a scratch, but this mine will have straight arms and nothing covered here. I'd like to soft that out a bit, soft the mid-tone. Okay, so um, I will just um, soft out these highlights here off cam and we'll be back for some shadows and the final highlights. Okay, all right, so here we are with the highlights softed out. Um, you can see this leg here looks already a little bit different than the other softed out parts because I've added some of these small highlights. Um, those are quite important to um, get the details look really crisp. So um, that's what we'll do in the next step. We'll do some highlights and some outlining of the individual parts. So we'll just take some pure black um, for the outlining work that needs to be done here and parts like that joint line here. Same here on the upper area. And we'll also just take some black and outline these rivets here. We'll just um, do the rest of them later on off cam. Not to bore you guys, we'll just uh, go on directly with our small highlights. Um, therefore, I'm mixing some of the techless blue with a little bit of white. And just with the side of the brush, um, I'm trying to hit the edge here. Get a little bit darker. That's pure techless blue. So for that edge. And with a little bit uh, stronger diluted techless blue, I will place here over the edge. Pull it down a bit. And uh, these small highlights are quite quite important to to get that shiny look. Same here on the top. And Feather it out a bit with a clean brush.
and even a bit brighter for just very little um, dots of highlight color. Okay, so I think these little highlights really um, add a lot to, to the blending before. Um, I will just continue uh, like that on the legs and we'll be back for the upper part here of the this rest of the torso here and also the helmet. Alright, 